It was a bright and clear morning, with the sun casting a warm glow over the suburban neighborhood where the Johnson family lived. The aroma of sizzling bacon and freshly brewed coffee wafted through the Johnson household, courtesy of Amanda, the energetic and organized mother. In the kitchen, Amanda expertly multitasked, scrambling eggs and flipping pancakes, the enticing smell of breakfast filling the air. Come on, everybody. We need to leave in an hour, and we still have so much to do. The airport won't wait for us. Kevin, the father with a touch of gray in his beard, was in the bathroom, hastily shaving away the stubble. The sound of the electric razor buzzed through the air as he glanced at the clock nervously. He had to get ready quickly, and so did the rest of the family. Upstairs, their son, Mike, was still lost in the land of dreams. His room echoed with the sound of his mother's persistent calls to wake up. Mike, rise and shine. We don't want to miss our flight. Kevin finished shaving and headed to Mike's room. He knocked loudly on the door, his voice booming. Let's go, sleepyhead. Time to get up. Just as Kevin walked away, Mike jolted awake from a nightmare, beads of sweat on his forehead. He shook off the eerie feeling, took a deep breath, and rubbed his eyes. Shaking off the remnants of the unsettling dream, he quickly got out of bed, still feeling a bit disoriented. Downstairs, Jackie, the teenage daughter, slowly emerged from her room, enticed by the delicious smells emanating from the kitchen. She had been lost in her own world, but the allure of her mother's cooking drew her downstairs. Amanda, noticing her daughter's arrival, welcomed her with a smile. Good morning, Jackie. Grab a seat. We're in a bit of a hurry. As the family gathered around the table for a hasty breakfast, the tantalizing aroma of the food filled the room. Mike, still shaken from his dream, joined them, recounting the details. Guys, I had the weirdest dream. We were all at the airport, and strange things were happening. It felt so real. Like the airport was a maze, and we couldn't find our way out. It was unsettling. The family exchanged puzzled glances, a momentary pause in the morning rush as they pondered Mike's words. But with the pressing urgency of the impending trip, they quickly resumed their chaotic routine. With breakfast hastily consumed and bags hastily packed, the Johnsons rushed out the door, leaving behind the morning chaos for the adventure that awaited them at the airport. As the Johnsons quickly piled into their car, the atmosphere outside the house seemed to echo the morning's chaos. Once inside the vehicle, with Kevin behind the wheel and Amanda in the front passenger seat, the family was greeted by the distant wail of sirens growing louder. The sound triggered a conversation about Mike's unusual dream. Jackie turned to Mike with a curious expression. So, Mike, what was happening at the airport in your dream? Anything specific? Mike glanced out of the window, pondering the question. It was strange, like the airport was a maze and everything felt distorted. I couldn't find our gate and it felt like we were going in circles. A few blocks into their journey as they approached the end of their street, a sudden figure appeared in their path. Kevin slammed on the brakes, narrowly avoiding a collision with the jogger who seemed to materialize out of nowhere. The jogger, panting heavily, turned out to be Stephen, their friendly neighbor, finishing his morning run. He waved. Morning, Johnsons. Heading to the airport, too, huh? Good luck. A relieved laugh filled the car as they continued down the street. Amanda mentioned, We should be there in about twenty minutes, traffic permitting. We've got plenty of time. As they merged onto the freeway, their journey took an unexpected turn. The family narrowly avoided a sideswipe by a speeding police car with blaring sirens racing towards an emergency. A few minutes later, the Johnsons noticed a plume of smoke in the distance. As they approached, they discovered a car accident with emergency vehicles already on the scene. The scene was chaotic, with paramedics and police attending to the situation. Further down the freeway, they encountered yet another accident, adding to the surreal morning. The family exchanged worried glances. What is happening today? Jackie wondered aloud. The freeway continued to be a theater of unexpected events, 
leaving the Johnsons bewildered. After navigating through the traffic snarls, they finally arrived at the airport parking lot. The chaos seemed to follow them as they quickly grabbed their luggage and hurried into the airport, weaving through the bustling crowds. The morning had been anything but ordinary, and the Johnsons couldn't shake the feeling that there was something peculiar about the day. Despite the hurdles, they were determined to make it to their destination and turn the chaotic morning into a distant memory. The Johnsons, shaken but determined, quickly walked to the gate, hoping for a return to normalcy after the chaotic morning. However, their hope was short-lived. Halfway to the gate, a sudden altercation erupted, causing a commotion among the crowd. Security rushed in to defuse the situation, adding to the tense atmosphere. Once the scuffle was resolved, the Johnsons got in line to board the plane. As they handed their tickets to the airline employee, Mike's mind flashed back to his earlier dream. The vivid memories sent a shiver down his spine. He snapped out of it just in time to hear a distant explosion. The entire airport fell into an eerie silence, with everyone frozen in place. Minutes passed, and the building suddenly shook. Panic set in as people started talking again, their voices filled with anxiety. The airline employee hesitated, her eyes filled with uncertainty, contemplating whether to allow the Johnsons on board. She exchanged worried glances with her co-worker. Phones rang in the background, but no one seemed to have answers. Suddenly, screams echoed from a distance, and the Johnsons, standing at the front of the line, anxiously asked the employee if she knew what was happening. Fire sprinklers turned on briefly, then off, as televisions around the airport displayed static. Lights flickered, creating a sense of fear. A collective gasp filled the air as the people in the airport witnessed a commercial airplane attempting to take off. In a horrific moment, the plane was struck from above, tearing it in two and causing a massive explosion. The airport erupted in chaos as terrified screams filled the air. Amidst the panic, Kevin grabbed his family, urging them to run for an exit. As they sprinted, Mike mentioned his nightmare, expressing an unsettling feeling about the day. Suddenly, something struck the side of the building, sending glass and debris flying toward them. Kevin instinctively tackled his family to the ground, shielding them from harm. Fortunately, they suffered only minor injuries. Screams and explosions continued to echo throughout the airport. Kevin checked on his family, ensuring they were okay, before they all quickly stood up and ran toward the nearest exit. As they ran further, they discovered a large hole in the roof, and their intended exit was blocked by massive blocks of cement. They pivoted to the next exit, where a large group of people was also rushing. Once outside, the Johnsons ran into Stephen. Together, they sprinted towards the Johnsons' SUV, witnessing another airplane descending and getting hit from above. The aircraft exploded, crashing to the ground from 2,000 feet. Breathing heavily, they reached the SUV, realizing that their day had taken a turn for the unimaginable. As they sped away from the airport, uncertainty and fear gripped their hearts, and the once clear morning sky was now filled with smoke and chaos. As they reached the freeway, their eyes turned skyward to witness fireballs raining down. Stephen's urgent shout, Look out! prompted Kevin to swerve, narrowly avoiding a collision with a car wreck seemingly struck by one of the falling fireballs. Stephen gestured to the maze-like freeway, congested with distressed vehicles. Jackie questioned if they were under attack, and Amanda responded, Those aren't missiles. Checking their phones for information, Stephen and Amanda both found no reception. Jackie and Mike experienced the same outcome. In response, Stephen directed Kevin to turn on the radio. The emergency broadcast on the radio informed them about a celestial anomaly affecting the planet. However, the message abruptly cut off, replaced by static, leaving the group in suspense about the situation. Jackie pressed for more information, but Stephen could only speculate, saying, Meteor showers are common, but never like this. Distant explosions punctuated the uncertainty. A sudden swerve by Kevin avoided a fireball hurtling toward them. After regaining control, Amanda expressed concerns about the safety of their home. Accelerating to navigate through the fiery wreckage on the freeway, 
Kevin aimed to reach home as quickly as possible. Approaching their neighborhood, they observed smoke and fire in the distance. Upon arrival, they found some houses devastated by the impacts, reduced to roaring fires. Jackie, however, noticed their home still standing amidst the chaos. Stephen happily added that his house had also escaped damage. Relief permeated their voices as they navigated through the turmoil, seeking refuge in the safety of their homes. As Stephen rushed into his house, his mind raced with urgency. He quickly gathered supplies, non-perishable food, water bottles, flashlights, and blankets. The reality of the situation sank in, and Stephen knew he had to be prepared for the unknown. Meanwhile, the Johnsons hurried inside their home. Kevin took charge, instructing the rest of the family to gather essential items. Grab water, blankets, and any non-perishable food you can find. Head to the basement, and I'll be right behind you, he said, his tone firm yet reassuring. In the basement, the Johnsons huddled together, the atmosphere tense with uncertainty. As they settled in, Kevin reassured them, We'll be okay. Let's stay calm and listen for updates. A few minutes later, a knock echoed through the basement. Kevin went to investigate, cautiously opening the door. To his surprise, Stephen stood there, looking equally concerned. Hey, Johnsons, mind if I join you down here? It's getting pretty chaotic out there, Stephen said, his eyes reflecting the gravity of the situation. Of course, Stephen. Come in, Kevin replied, gesturing for him to enter. As Stephen settled into the basement, Kevin couldn't help but notice the duffel bag slung over Stephen's shoulder. Curiosity and concern furrowed Kevin's brow. What's in the bag, Stephen? Stephen sighed, unzipping the duffel bag to reveal an assortment of guns and a large five-gallon jug of water. Just in case things get worse, we need to be ready to protect ourselves and our families. The gravity of the situation deepened as the Johnsons realized the severity of the celestial anomaly. The basement, once a symbol of safety, now felt like their refuge in the midst of an unpredictable storm. Together, with Stephen's unexpected arsenal, they awaited news and hoped for the best, uncertain of what the future held. In the dimly lit basement, the Johnsons and Stephen listened anxiously to the crackling radio, desperate for any guidance amidst the chaos. The announcer's voice broke through the static, Attention, citizens! If you are hearing this broadcast, everyone in the city is advised to head to the football stadium immediately. It has a very large basement capable of providing shelter and cover for all residents. The message sparked a sense of urgency. The Johnsons and Stephen gathered their essentials, including the duffel bag of supplies Stephen had brought, and headed to the waiting vehicle. The night sky outside was painted with distant fiery hues as they rushed to the car. As they pulled out of the driveway, the Johnsons couldn't tear their eyes away from their home. In a heart-wrenching moment, they witnessed the destruction unfold, their once safe haven succumbing to the relentless forces of the celestial anomaly. Silently, they continued their journey, a mix of sorrow and determination in their hearts. The drive to the stadium was fraught with challenges. Fires burned on the roadside, and explosions echoed in the distance, creating an unsettling symphony of chaos. The streets were filled with panicked citizens, all converging towards the same destination. As the Johnsons and Stephen navigated through the chaotic city, the air thick with tension, they encountered blocked roads and detours. Kevin skillfully maneuvered the vehicle, and Amanda tried to keep the atmosphere in the car as calm as possible, comforting both her children and Stephen. The flickering cityscape and distant sounds of destruction painted a surreal picture. The radio intermittently provided updates, urging citizens to stay calm and follow evacuation routes. After what felt like an eternity, the Johnsons and Stephen finally arrived at the football stadium. The sight of the massive structure brought a mixture of relief and trepidation. The entrance was a swarm of people, all seeking refuge in the stadium's secure basement. The Johnsons, along with Stephen, joined the flood of people rushing towards safety. The air was thick with tension, and the urgency in every step was palpable. 
As they descended into the depths of the stadium, a mixture of fear and hope lingered. The large basement, once the backdrop for cheers and celebrations, now became a sanctuary for the city's uncertain fate. The Johnsons and Stevens settled into their new surroundings, steeling themselves for the unknown that lay ahead. In the stadium's basement, a sea of faces huddled together, sharing stories of loss and fear. The air was thick with the collective weight of uncertainty. Cries and distant yells echoed through the concrete walls as the explosions from above became more frequent. The Johnsons found themselves amidst the somber crowd, sharing anxious glances with their fellow citizens. Conversations inquired about neighborhoods, each question met with heavy hearts and pained responses. How's East Side holding up? Someone asked. Amanda shook her head. Gone. We saw it collapse on our way here. The news echoed, each neighborhood mentioned, met with the grim acknowledgement of destruction. As the night wore on, the distant explosions persisted, a haunting reminder of the devastation unfolding outside. The citizens tried to find solace in the darkness, attempting to sleep amid the uncertainty. Some huddled together, finding comfort in shared grief, while others stayed awake, their eyes haunted by the unseen horrors above. Morning came with a surreal quietness. The once animated stadium basement now felt like a city of the displaced, waiting for news from the outside. Yet, as hours passed, the silence prevailed. Anxiety settled among the crowd as they realized the absence of updates only deepened the mystery of their city's fate. Slowly, citizens began to emerge from the basement, cautiously ascending the stairs to face the unknown. The sight that awaited them was beyond comprehension. The city, once vibrant and alive, now lay in ruins. Flames licked the sky, and smoke billowed from the remains of what was once their home. As they walked through the desolate streets, the gravity of their situation became more apparent. The city that had been their haven was now a graveyard of memories, a stark reminder of the fragility of their existence. Mike, trying to bring a semblance of levity to the heavy atmosphere, joked with his mother, Remember when I said my dream was a sign of prophecy? I didn't think it would be this literal. A momentary laughter cut through the despair, a brief respite from the overwhelming reality they faced. The citizens walked through the ruins, their steps heavy with grief and disbelief. Amidst the destruction, a shared sense of resilience emerged, binding them together as they navigated the remnants of their once thriving city. The Johnsons, like everyone else, faced an uncertain future, their lives forever altered by the celestial anomaly that had plunged their world into chaos.